Hey everybody, this is Horea. I hope y'all are having a great weekend so far, that you had a good week. Um, I hope all my heart healers are doing great, and I call y'all heart healers because that's what we all are, because we're helping heal other people's hearts. Any of you that are new to the podcast, if you haven't listened to the first two, um, in the first one, I talked a little bit about how basically when you are being yourself, when you're being that empath when that that rises up in you and you you know or people are drawn to you and you listen to people's problems or you talk to them or even whether you mean to or not absorb those emotions off of them you're helping to heal them and while you are you're helping others feel better and you're you're helping heal that that broken heart or that you know that person who's down in the dumps and depressed or just really needs someone to listen to them and you're healing them but you're also taking that into yourself and that can make it really tough for empaths. Um, What I want to talk about today is actually controlling your empathic gift somewhat. A couple people have mentioned this to me that um, they would like to know like some different ways that you can do that. So I will say right up front there's no like magic formula there's no like on off switch if you're an empath you are an empath and you know that because you've been that all your life um so you're not gonna like follow these steps and the next day be like okay i did step blah 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 why is it still happening (laughs) which i'm sure you know that but i'm being funny but um but here's the thing we get so used to doing things a certain way you know we have certain habits or certain things that we put ourselves into whether consciously or not and there are a lot of things we can actually do to either remove ourselves from situations or just get new habits and things like that and it just requires a new way of thinking but what I can tell you and this is from past experience of my own if you do these things eventually you will get to a point to where you're like, hey, I'm not as bothered by this anymore. Or, hey, you know what? I haven't haven't felt all depressed and terrible and like I want to just go and wring somebody's neck in a long time. <laughs> it, it will help you. I mean, I believe it'll help you, which is the whole reason I'm doing this podcast is because when I, you know, I've been an empath, of course, all my life. It's a gift that, you know, we're born with. And I really wish that, especially as a kid, especially when I was growing up, but I really wish that somebody would have A, understood, and B, could have told me some things to help me realize that, guess what, there's nothing wrong with me, I wasn't abnormal, I wasn't just oversensitive. If someone had told me, hey, you know what, you are amazing, you have a gift, you have a heart, you know, you have that desire to help people and, and that you're healing their hearts, you know, mentally, emotionally. That would have made all the difference in the world to me. And so it's really important to me now that maybe I can help some of y'all out. Or if you know someone, you know, even if you're not an empath and you happen to be listening to this, if you know somebody that could benefit, then feel free to share it with them and maybe it'll help them out because like one thing I had mentioned in one of my earlier podcasts was that all our lives we're told that you know you're just oversensitive or you're just so rude you just don't ever want to be around anybody or do anything which that's probably going to be our next topic we talk about next week (laughs) but you know we're people don't mean to but they kind of they kind of put us down or criticize us and they don't mean it that way it's just that we're so different from them and so we grow up with that and buddy that plays havoc on your self-esteem I know (laughs) it does and so to find out even if it's later in life to find out that there's nothing wrong with you and you're actually an amazing person that has a beautiful gift to help other people feel better I think that's pretty dang awesome so but anyway I'm getting off topic (laughs) so what we're going to talk about today is just kind of controlling that empathic gift a little bit and okay I'm going to give you an example that happened to me just yesterday 
and I was thinking about it and I was like wow that is just perfect for what I'm wanting to talk about and like I said I've been following these steps for a long time and I've just kind of added some things here and there and then when I got to really thinking about you know how I wanted to do this podcast I was like this is what I do this is what has helped me so maybe it'll help y'all but anyway so I had a really long day at work take that back a long past two weeks <laughs> at work um, we've been doing stuff for the holidays and everything and so we're working a lot of overtime and I'm drained as it is so I go and I just I drop my trash off do it two three times a week you know and people that are friendly and I mean they know me and stuff like that but I was already late and I was just like I really want to get home <laughs> so um, one of the fellas there that that takes care of the trash he came over and grabbed my bags which was awesome I appreciated it and uh, he starts talking to me a little bit and before I know it he's like completely all I did was say hi okay <laughs> and sometimes that's just all it takes is just hi you know or even not even that but he started telling me about this co-worker that was um really bothering him and giving him problems and just all this stuff that he had been through and then how he hadn't had a day off in so long and I could tell he just he needed to vent he needed to unload and so you know I listened and you know I said yeah I understand I would feel the same way and and that kind of thing and so I was there probably 15 minutes I don't know longer than what I would have been and then he got done and he was just, just in this great mood and he was just like messing around and everything and he just I could tell that he felt better and I was like okay great you know I helped him feel better because he just needed somebody to listen that's all and um, so it was like you know there was a time when that might have bothered me a little bit too he was pretty ticked off about it <laughs> and but this time it didn't I was able to just it, it was kind of like okay this is what comes to mind some of you that are a little bit older you might remember this or even in the newer movie you know Wonder Woman which I love Wonder Woman but anyway you know how she holds up her her little wrists with her bracelets and go ding 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 and she reflects the the bullets and stuff off that's kind of what it makes me think of like with my shielding it's like that ding 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 not gonna hit me <laughs> I'm just fine so yeah actually I, I felt good even though I was tired and everything I felt really good that I was able to help somebody but it didn't get into me it didn't drag me down so I mean and that's just a, a small little experience but you know I'm sure you know maybe you guys can relate with that I know you can but anyway back to our topic <laughs> thanks for just letting me talk there <laughs> um, controlling your empathic gift the first thing that you want to do is you want to start your day with the shield and those of you that might not have heard the previous podcast it was all about shielding um, different ways you can do that I had my husband um, on to teach about just a good basic shield and then I went in and kind of explained a little more of what what I do for a shield and and there's various ways that you can do that but you want to start your day either putting your shield on or maybe just recharging it or giving it a good cleanse something like that that's you always want to start your day like that and if that means you have to like get up five minutes earlier you know or while you're in the bathroom while you're doing your routine whatever it's it doesn't have to be anything major and involved it's just you know just something simple that you do and you can start working that into your routine that will help you immensely even if that was all you did it would help you a lot but I got some other good ideas for you too number two Remind yourself during the day, like if you begin to experience thoughts or feelings that you know don't ring true to your character, who you are, you catch yourself, you know, feeling things like, wait a minute, where did this thought come from? That's not me. Where did these feelings come from? Mm, I don't think that's me. Chances are you've probably, you've picked something up from somebody around you or someone you talk to. So when you when you first start to realize that, the first step actually is, is knowing that. Just knowing that is kind of freeing and stuff because you're like, okay, that's not me. 
Second thing you want to do is you want to you want to cleanse yourself from that negative energy. You know, you can you can use my idea of purple ray, you know, coming down and cleansing you, or just whatever works for you. Something to just kind of cleanse and ground yourself a little bit, ground out that negative energy, and get rid of it. But don't don't accept it as yours. Don't carry it with you. Snip it in the bud right there. Be like, okay, I know where this came from. I know what it is. This is not me. So that is the second thing that will help you. Third thing that you want to do is make sure that you take some time in nature. Empaths and nature are just like we go hand in hand. You can't you can't separate us from nature. You know, even if you only get a few minutes outside, even if it's just having the windows down and the music up while you're driving, you know, something. But something about nature, we just, I mean, we are natural beings anyway. We connect with nature. And empaths need that time to re-energize and revitalize. And you've probably caught yourself saying many times, I would guess, I know this is how I feel, but when I've been outside for a little while, or like if we go camping, or, you know, just spending a day outside, I just, I feel so recharged. I just feel like, oof, like all renewed and happy, and it's like I got sunshine in my soul, you know? I mean, seriously, I do. It just, it makes me feel wonderful. And we need that time to just kind of get back with nature and kind of de-stress out a little bit. Fourth thing, which that actually kind of leads into this, is make sure that you get some quiet time. Some I call it de-peopling, <laughs> which is funny because as an empath, you, you help people and you want to help people, but by that same token, you have to kind of pull back and de-people, you know, get that time to yourself. Um, sometimes when I'm around a lot of people, it can, it can feel a little, it just feels a little much. Even with my shielding and stuff like that, it's like, I just need to, I'm like, okay, this has been great. Okay, I'm ready to go. (laughs) I'm ready to go get back to my little corner of, my little corner of heaven, my little bliss spot, you know, whatever. I'm ready to just go kind of be on my own for a bit. So if, you know, you find yourself constantly around other people just all the time, it will wear you down. No matter what you do, no matter what you practice, I mean, it will. It'll kind of get to you. So you might need to take that time to just kind of be solitary for a little while. You know, use that time to go outside, write in your journal, listen to music, you know. If you've got pets, you know, spend that time with your pets. I mean, and by the way, just as a side note, I think pets are wonderful for empaths. If you're not allergic to them or anything like that, you know, I I love my animals. Oh, my God. I love them more than people, to to be honest. Um, They don't judge you. They love you unconditionally. And it's just like there's something about it, you know. So if, you could even add that too. If you don't have a pet, get one <laughs> if you can. But um, okay, the fifth step is going to probably require a little bit of a rethinking on your part, and that is practice saying no more often. Because as empaths, because we do love to help people. And we desire to help people. That desire can cause us to say yes to things that we really don't want to do. But we don't want to disappoint somebody. We don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, I am very aware of, of what I say and what I do with other people. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I try really hard. Um... I'm the kind of person that in the past I have left a message a few different times, like, you know, on an answering service or whatever, I've left the message and I was like, wait a minute, I don't like the way that sounded. Did I sound, did I sound bitchy? (laughs) Did I sound, did I sound ugly like I was being mean? Maybe I should go redo that. 
so that's me um that kind of thinking can cause us to get drawn into doing things that we just don't want to do and if you do that a lot then guess what you're not taking able to take time for yourself or maybe it takes time away from your family or something of that nature because you're trying so hard to be all things to all people and you can't do that the sad fact of the matter is is you you have to pick and choose you have to have your priorities and you have to make sure those priorities line up and you can't let anything get in the way of what time you need to take care of yourself or the time you need to take care of your family so and people of course nobody's gonna like being told no I mean people don't like to hear that word they don't like being told that they can't have what they want and if they think they can consistently come back to you and get what they want then guess what they're going to keep doing it until you break that cycle and that's probably going to be one of the harder things to fix in your life but I guarantee you you will be so much happier once you do and people will respect you more too People tend to respect people who, as they see, respect themselves. And when you are putting your foot down and saying no, you're showing respect for yourself and for your family. So you can do with that one what you will. The sixth thing, which kind of goes along with that a little bit, is try to stay clear of toxic people because they will latch on to you like a drug. I mean, really. Um, Being an empath, you can find yourself kind of getting involved in other people's drama accidentally. Never meant to do it, but it can be really easy because people come to you to talk. And, you know, maybe they're the kind of people who gossip or twist things around and you're trying to be super super careful like not to say anything you shouldn't say or do anything you shouldn't do and even if you just be like yeah you know like or just you know not necessarily agreeing with them but like to show you're listening they could take that as you're agreeing with them and then guess what if they're the kind of person that likes to instigate trouble when they make up with whoever they're mad at, oh, well, I said so-and-so, so-and-so, and they said, yeah, they agree with me, blah, blah, blah. The reason I say this is I have had stupid stuff like this happen to me in the past, and it's just, it's really kind of being in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. So the more that you can kind of extricate yourself away from those situations and try to avoid those kind of situations with people, the better off that you will be for that too and that can you know it can cause a lot of drama it can cause a lot of heartache and you know and things that you don't need to worry and stress about you know life is hard enough as it is and then you have some people that just kind of thrive off of that stuff and if it's someone close to you or someone that's in your family that makes it even harder so try to keep your distance from those situations as best you can and if you can't then, like I said earlier, you, you're going to have to use that word no or just say, sorry, I got something to do, I, I, you know, and politely excuse yourself. So, okay, number seven, take care of yourself. This is so important. Um, you need vitamins, you know, good vitamins to take care of yourself with, healthy foods, I mean, I know this is a no-brainer, and we hear that everywhere, but it's really true. Um, Some good supplements you can take are CoQ10, which is like a major strong antioxidant, and vitamin D. And you can even Google this yourself, but a lot of studies have found that, um, and by the way, I'm not a doctor or anything like that, so I guess I have to add that little disclaimer. This is just my opinion. (laughs) This is what I do. But, and I love to research about things, especially when it comes to health and vitamins and stuff like that. I'm just, I love that kind of thing. Um, But studies have found that the recommended daily allowance of vitamin D is woefully low. That we can actually use a lot more of that sunshine vitamin 
than what they tell us we can. And like if you'll notice, even when you um, when you pick up a a bottle of that at the store, and you see what the recommended dose is for the day, it's they'll they tell you could take it like maybe twice or something like that. But you know, do a little research into that. But I would highly recommend um, vitamin D. Like I said, CoQ10, vitamin C always. Um, green tea is great for you as far as teas and things like that go calcium magnesium and zinc good multi and uh, lately I've been using the uh, turmeric where you can like just mix it up and put it in water that's a really good antioxidant too lots of good things come from turmeric um, make sure that you don't have any like um issues that would you know rise up from using it always you you always want to research anything before you start using it but just those are some things that I do but you know anything that you can do that will enhance your immunity especially in these days is going to be beneficial to you Um, the next thing along those lines with taking care of yourself is sleep make sure you get plenty of sleep if your body is telling you that you need to lay down at 7.30 at night, even though it's, you might feel it's too early, listen to your body because it usually knows best. Get that extra sleep. You could be fighting off uh, sickness. It could be that you're just weary and that you just need that extra sleep. So, you know, do it. Always make sure you get plenty of rest because when you are sleeping, that is when your body does most of its repairing and healing up if you go without sleep or you short yourself on sleep then you are shorting yourself on immunity and just basically feeling good and being able to function throughout the day so get your rest (laughs) and the third thing I'm going to add with that which I don't hear it said enough is go have fun you need fun fun is so important Um, you know if you work 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 all the time and you never have any fun, that's no good. (laughs) You gotta enjoy life too. Life has got to be about more than paying the bills and surviving. You've got to do a little bit of thriving in there too. So I don't know um, if any of you are familiar with The Sims, that have ever played The Sims, but if you have, you already know where I'm going with this. They have a little bar. They have a bar for their sleep and a bar for when they got to pee and when they're hungry and all that good stuff. But they also have one for fun. And if their fun level gets too low, hey, I I mean, they can die from that. (laughs) But I mean, like with my husband and I, we love to video game together. We love gaming. Um, We love doing paranormal explorations. We love watching TV. I mean, there's, uh, and honestly, he is my best friend. I love him so much. So if you don't have someone in your life like that, I, I hope and pray that you find someone. But whatever you do to have fun, you need to do that. I mean, you need to allow yourself just to, you know, if you like to draw or paint or go play music or, you know, an instrument or anything like that, whatever you do that is fun for you, Make sure that you take the time to do that because you are worth that, you know, and look at it this way. If, you know, you want to be able to be your best to go take care of others, but if you're not taking care of yourself, then you can't take care of others either. So you got to take care of you. So make sure that you do those things, you know, and I just realized I might be sounding a little bit like a mother right now. If I do, I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, sort of sorry, sort of not. But, I mean, I am a mom, <laughs> so it probably does come out, and I do have a tendency to kind of mother people around me, so, but, okay, whatever. <laughs> but, yes, make sure that you get your, get your sleep, get your vitamins in, and go have some fun. The last thing that I'm going to mention in these steps is very important and maybe the hardest one. Give yourself permission to realize you can't change the world. That's probably the biggest thing. And like I said, it's it's hard, especially for us as empaths. 
because in reality we know we can't change the world but we want to make those changes we want to make people feel better we want to you know we want to be there for people um you can be a light and always be your best but um you have to remember that you aren't responsible for other people's bad choices. And that's so important. I'm going to repeat that. You aren't responsible for other people's bad choices. Whether it goes back to them trying to draw you into something you don't want to be involved in. If it's something that goes against your inner nature, you know, if someone is wanting you to do one thing and your insides are screaming, no, no, don't do it, always listen to your intuition. Because we are very intuitive, and we're usually spot on. Um, you know, there's lots of times when I've been able to, not bragging, but just saying, I can size up a situation or a person, uh, just their vibes just kind of scream at me. And other people are like, you don't know what you're talking about. That person's fine, or this situation is okay. And I'm thinking, Mm-mm, no, there's something that's not right. And... Nine and a half times out of ten, I'm usually right. And you're probably the same way. But, um, but yeah, you just, and you have to realize, though, that there are some things you have to let go. Like, the things that are going on in this world right now, they will make you sick. They will just make you sick to your stomach, make you where you can't sleep and anxiety and everything. And you have to just kind of realize that basically K sera sera what's going to be is going to be and take care of your world first take care of you take care of yours so that you can go out and then be that light to others that come across your path but try not to let everything in the world be too much of a burden on your shoulders because you have people in high places that are, you know, making decisions and and things that we can't control. So concentrate on taking care of the things that you can control in our little bitty areas. And that way that way you can help others when you see them or like I said when they come across your path or as you're able to or you might decide to go out and do a podcast or do a YouTube channel and be like, hey, you know, and you have your, your giftings and your ways of helping other people. Um, this is actually something I've wanted to do for a long time. And you know what? I didn't just didn't realize how easy it was. So if I can do this, you can do it too. I mean, go out there and, and touch as many people as you can to help them. But, um, but yeah, just remember that you can't be responsible for what everything else that's going on in the world and if you're not responsible for it then you need to kind of step back and be like okay I'm going to take care of my corner of the world take care of what I can and get my sleep get my rest have a little bit of fun enjoy this life I've been given because you can't take anything for granted you know you can't take tomorrow for granted you can't take five minutes from now for granted make the most of every day that you have But anyway, so I'm going to briefly go back. I'm just going to list those things off in case some of y'all might want to write it down, stick it on your fridge, whatever, just some little reminders during the day. Um, Number one, start your day with a shield, recharge, or a cleanse. Number two, remind yourself during the day that if you begin to experience thoughts or feelings that don't ring true to who you are, don't own those. Number three, Spend some time in nature. Number four, get some quiet time to kind of de people, get away from folks for a little bit. Number five, practice saying no a lot more often. Number six, stay clear of toxic people. Number seven, take care of yourself. And number eight, Give yourself permission to realize that you can't change the world. So, this has gone on a little bit longer than I than I intended, but I hope y'all got something out of it. I really appreciate all of you who listen. 
I've gotten a lot more listeners and and I've seen that on my cast and it just it makes me feel so good because I just I love each and every one of you I don't know you but I love you I love the fact that you're getting something out of this and I just appreciate you so much so with that I have a little quote for us and this one is by he was a poet his name is Theodore Rothke I think I said that right it's deep in their roots all flowers keep the light you are a beautiful flower each and every one of you are beautiful beautiful flowers full of light and hope and sunshine that people can't help but be drawn to. So you need to keep your light. Stay grounded, keep your light, and never let it fade. The light in you is strong. (laughs) It really is. That's why people are drawn to you so much. That's why people come and tell you their problems, and that's why you find yourself having to worry about saying no or being in a situation or being tired because you give and give and give. You give so much of yourselves. I know that you do. You give until you literally can't give anymore. So you have to kind of reclaim some of that time back for you. So thank you. Thank you for listening. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And if you can think of anything that you'd like to hear talked about, message me. Let me know. I'd be glad to hear it. Just remember that you are amazing. No matter what anybody else says, you are amazing. So, all right. I love y'all. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.